All right, so question here about how do we get more interest in our uh, client work or interest in our online classes, especially uh, a lot of you may have been doing in-person things before the pandemic and the pandemic has forced you to do more online offerings. Uh, and it's, you know, the thing about online offerings is that, well, you know, you might, it might feel like there's less impact that you're making, but maybe not because as you learn how to um, use the online tools, uh, it may even create more impact for your clients and students as you learn to effectively use it. Uh, and the market, of course, is much, much bigger for you <laughs> online than it is locally, right? Because now you can reach people all across your country, all across your region, and possibly the globe as long as the time zones match whatever time you're willing to work. So how do we get clients or get more students interested? So essentially, of course, the process is marketing. And as you know, I love to talk about authentic marketing. So let me just give you a quick overview of what that means. Um, of course, people sign up with you when they trust you, right? When they trust your expertise. <clears throat> so there is a common, uh, maybe misunderstand, perhaps I could just say misunderstanding about how marketing works which is, or advertising works, which is, and some, and this is why people, you know, I'm telling you this because people waste a lot, a lot of money on this. They will hire an advertising expert to say, oh, this person knows how to run Google ads or Facebook ads or Instagram ads or whatever. So I'm going to hire them <clears throat> and they're going to charge me hundreds of dollars a month, aside from the advertising, uh, the actual ad budget itself. And so they end up spending maybe even over a thousand dollars a month. And the person still has a hard time, that advertiser has a hard time getting them clients because most of the advertising strategy to me is not effective. And the reason is because the advertising strategy goes like this. Well, obviously your work is awesome, isn't it? So we just have to let people know that your online class exists because you know your work is great. Well, why wouldn't they know your work is great? <laughs> well, because they are not in your head. <laughs> they don't know your life's experience. So then you say, well, George, then, then it, it's all about good copywriting, isn't it? It's all about good branding and design. If I impress them with amazing graphic design and really clever copywriting, then won't they sign up and work with me? Okay, now you're getting into the territory of inauthenticity because there are, there's basically two, two pathways in marketing. You could be instantly impressive or try to be anyway, you could try to be instantly impressive to a stranger who doesn't know and trust you yet, or you can be consistently authentic and thereby build real trust over time because of who you actually are. So this is the complaint I have when I see so much of branding and copywriting is it's not really them. It's the copywriter's voice and it's the branding coach or the graphic designer's style. And so they, and you pay thousands for this, obviously. You pay thousands for an amazing looking website and cleverly written copy. And it's not really you. <laughs> okay. You just, you don't really talk like that or even show up like that. And when people start working with you, they may even be disappointed that you weren't as, you know, whatever, instantly professional as. So look at me. I, I, I've fully dedicated myself to the consistently authentic path. And I actually purposely try not to be instantly impressive to strangers. And so the funny part is that my branding kind of sucks, to be honest with you. <laughs> my graphic design kind of sucks because I, I have a good eye for this stuff. I've I mean, mar been marketing for 15 years. So I have a good eye for this stuff. I know my graphic design and branding kind of sucks. And I know my copywriting is like, meh, it's okay. However, I have a waiting list of clients. However, I can't even take the people. I, I have my waiting list keeps growing every year. How? Because I fully dedicate myself to the consistently authentic path, which means I keep showing up. I keep, I, I call it blessing. I keep blessing the market with ex, whatever, whatever expertise I can show up with that moment. So what does that mean for you then? George, I, I still need clients. Okay. I still need clients. So tell me, just stop the, all this talk, philosophical talk, and just tell me how do I get the next 10 clients? So two ways. One is there is what's called low-hanging fruit. And one is cultivating an orchard so that you'll have more low-hanging fruit in the future, right? That's really the two ways. 
low-hanging fruit. You already know people who would probably sign up for your online classes or sign up to work with you if you simply reminded them. I should mention, you already know people who trust your expertise, who already like you, who already trust that you know what you're talking about and that your work is effective. You already know people. You, because everybody knows at least 150 people, right? Studies say. You, everybody knows at least 150 people by first name basis. So look at your 150 people. Now, you might not have an email list. You might not have 150 followers on Instagram or Facebook. But in your address book, in your email address book, in your phone book, you have 150 people who know you on a first name basis. Now, not all 150 are potential clients of yours. But out of those 150, some are potential clients, some are potential referral sources, people who could refer you potential clients, and therefore you are borrowing the trust that this second degree person has in your first degree contact. So if I know Mary, right? Mary trusts me, but Mary's not a potential client, just you know, whatever reason it's not the right fit for her. But Mary knows another 150 people, right? Mary knows 150 people and Mary likes me and trusts me. <clears throat> there are people who like and trust Mary. And if Mary said, work with George, <clears throat> maybe out of those 150, three of them would say, yes, I need what George does. And let me go check out his website, Facebook, whatever it is that is available publicly to share. That makes sense? So step one, tell your 150 people, you got to reach out via email or via text message, or, or via Facebook message, whatever is appropriate for each person, because all 150 people, what you don't do, what we don't do, is to do a, a single email and put it all in the to field, <laughs> right? Because then everyone starts replying all, oh, please unsubscribe, please unsubscribe, and then everyone, <clears throat> you, know, and you, don't, you also don't want to put everyone in the BCC blind carbon copy field, because then they still feel spammed. You need to reach out to each of those 150 one by one. Don't do it all today because you don't have time to do it all today, but do it all over time. It might take you three months and that'd be a three month project to reach out to those 150 people one by one thoughtfully, thoughtfully, because each person deserves their own message, their own outreach customized for them. If someone wants you to reach out via email because that's just how you talk to them. Some people want you to reach out via Facebook message because that's usually how you connect with them. Each one will need something different. Does that make sense? So you already have enough clients. You actually do. They just forget that that's what you do. This is very important. Even your best friends have forgotten about the service you provide. They, they really do. My, <clears throat> I have friends, if you just ask me, well, what do they do? I'm like, um, I have to think for a moment. And if somebody came up to me and said, oh, I need help with this issue, I might not even think instantly of my best friend <clears throat> if they have not reminded me recently that that's what they do. If someone came to me and says, oh, I need yoga classes, I probably have 10 people I could refer, but I don't even remember who they are. I'm going to refer the yoga class, though, to Frida, because that's the last person who asked to said that she had, a free, she had a yoga class, and I trust that she knows what she's doing. Do you see what I mean? So we get clients within three days. That's the interesting part. We get clients within three days. And so it's like, that's why we need to remind our 150 twice a year. Twice a year, we need to remind them that this is what we do. And then we have a three-day window that they might refer someone to us. You see, this is, it's really like that. Now, what's the other path, George? You said, you know, there's low-hanging fruit. You got to reach out to them and they'll probably refer you clients. If you reach out to 150, you'll probably get a couple. Maybe you'll get all your clients you need at this time. You know, maybe, really. And then the other way is consistently authentic, which means you show up on a consistent basis on social media or through your email newsletter or however you do. And this is where the advertising comes in. Most of my advertising dollars aren't saying, hey, stranger, you have no idea who I am. I want you to trust me right away and spend money with you right now, <clears throat> right? Which is what most advertising does, which is why most of us don't like most advertising. It's trying to get us to jump in bed with them without us even trusting them, with clever copywriting and fantastic design. We're like, that's why we avoid most advertising. How do I advertise? I advertise by giving content. Most of the money I spend on Facebook Instagram ads isn't to sell anything. It's just to bless people with this message or with this video that I think is gonna be helpful for them. So that's how I show up consistently. 
day after day after day, week after week after week. And no wonder I've built a big audience. No wonder I have a waiting list without even, you know, having to do my one. I don't, I no longer do one-on-one outreach. It's been years. And yet there's a waiting list. So that's what we do. Low hanging fruit first, which means our 150 people, individualized message, maybe over three months or six months, you know, however much time it takes you. And then also at the same time, the parallel path consistently showing up advertising. Yes. Facebook, Instagram ads, Google ads, but with content rather than buy my thing. You don't know who I am Buy my thing. Right. So I hope this is helpful. And I want to thank Frida for bringing this up. I mean, Frida, you mentioned you used to do that. You used to email people one-on-one. The connection was great. And somehow that we forget to do that. All of us forget yeah. to. I mean, this is so true. Like I have worked with so many service providers over the years. How many of them keep in touch with me? Even, e- even, even if they all just say, hey, I have, a, I have a summer deal or spring deal right now. Almost nobody keeps in touch with me. I'm a, co- I'm a client of many people. You see, this is true for just about every service provider most of us, number one, we're disorg. We 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 don't even know that we need to do this. And number two, when we know we need, need to do this, we're disorganized and we don't do it. You know. And so, yes, we will be one of the few to actually reach back out to whoever it is, whether it's our past clients, if it feels appropriate to do so, or our friends and our colleagues, and to say hello again. And maybe in some cases, it may feel um, appropriate to connect on a Zoom call or something like that short, you know, brief call, have a cup of tea on Zoom or something like that. But yes, connect with each person and naturally business will come from that. That's the, mm-hmm. that's the low hanging fruit. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.